Hello, friends, and welcome as we celebrate this wonderful season of Pentecost. This morning, I'm going to be talking about that event that is so significant to the church. Sometimes there are churches who don't even celebrate Pentecost. And yet Pentecost is so incredibly important to us as a church. It's important not just to the Christian faith, but it's also important to the Jewish faith. Pentecost has that significance for both Judaism and Christianity. Interestingly enough, what may not be recognized is that Pentecost occurred on the Jewish celebration of Shavuot. So Christians were celebrating Pentecost and the Jews were celebrating the remembrance of the giving of the law. It's no coincidence that they happened on the same day, that it was during that time. The Shavuot is a celebration of the first fruits of harvest. And isn't that in a sense what it is for Christians? Those believers in Jerusalem on that momentous day were the first fruits of the great harvest that was just beginning. Just as Passover and the Exodus were a foreshadowing of how we celebrate Good Friday and Easter, so in a way the Shavuot is a foreshadowing of Pentecost. So let's look a little bit at what exactly happened at Pentecost. I mean, you've heard the scriptures that were read this morning um, from Acts. So after Jesus' ascension, about 120 of Jesus' followers continued to meet in Jerusalem. They met on a regular basis in Jerusalem. And about 10 days after Jesus' ascension, they were all together when all of a sudden a sound like a blowing wind came among them. And what appeared to be tongues of fire came down upon their heads and they began to speak in various languages. Now the crowd that was there to celebrate heard the sound and they were drawn to it. They heard this, all the speakers from Jesus' followers speaking in their languages and they couldn't understand it. How is it that we are hearing this in our own languages? Surely these men must be drunk. These people must be drunk. And then Peter stood up and preached what became his first sermon. And 3,000 people were added to their numbers on that particular day. So is that all that really happened on that day? That's the physical events that are described. Pentecost is so significant because it's really more than just the physical happening on that day. There's two reasons that Pentecost is significant. One is a personal application and the other is more universal. On the eve of Jesus' betrayal and arrest, Jesus promised a comforter. Jesus said, I will be sending you a comforter. I will be leaving you and I will be sending you a comforter. And that promise was fulfilled at Pentecost. Christ sent the Holy Spirit, not just to the followers, but the Holy Spirit came to all of them that were there. And it wasn't a temporary arrangement. The Holy Spirit came and has stayed with us. The Holy Spirit is the presence of Christ indwelling in us and enabling us to live the life that Jesus' death and resurrection made possible. The other event is the establishment of the church. The Holy Spirit took that motley group of individuals those 120 or however many disciples that were there on that day. And those that had followed him for as long as three years and turned them into a unified body. He drew them together. The Holy Spirit drew them together. 
It is the Holy Spirit sent to us at Pentecost that draws us into the body of Christ. But there really is so much more to this event and season than just really the makings of the beginning of the church. As mentioned, this happened on the same day as Shavuot was being celebrated. And so it's, it's a connection. It's a great connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The same day as the Jews are celebrating the giving of the law. So the New Testament church was given the spirit. This also fulfilled the Jeremiah prophecy, as was, as was read in the Acts passage, that the spirit would be poured out. Transformation takes place when we allow the Holy Spirit to write God's law in our hearts. Living the Christian life and being a part of the church is not just about getting our theology right. It's also about living out God's justice and mercy in our everyday words and actions. This is more than obedience to a written set of laws. It is purposely acting in response to what God has done and is doing in our lives. We are becoming more Christ-like as the Holy Spirit is creating a new person in us by writing God's ways on our minds and our hearts. A third significant point about Pentecost, it was the beginning of the spread of Jesus' ministry. To that point, Jesus' ministry was just in those areas where he walked and he preached and he shared. But Pentecost was the beginning of the multiplication. 3,000 were added to their number on that day. And Jesus had said to, the, to those who were gathered at his ascension, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will go and you will share my teachings. You will share my word. It was the beginning of creating disciples around the world. It was the beginning of this journey of what would become the church. It's so much bigger than just that one event. It's bringing into focus the missional nature of the church. When the Methodist Church says we are to be bringing disciples of Jesus Christ, creating, helping to create them for the transformation of the world. Jesus knew that it couldn't just be this small group of people in this one area, that, it, that the message of God's love and grace and mercy needed to be spread to the world. And this was the starting point. And really hearing the gospel is only one piece of it. Those that were there that day heard the gospel in their own, own languages. And that is a significant part, being able to share the gospel to others in their language. And yet many people begin to be, follow Christ, not because of what they hear, but because of what they see. It's about relationship. It's about being in relationship with others. That is how the gospel is often spread. They see the gospel lived out in a way that makes sense to them in someone else's life. It's very inclusive. Jesus intended for this gospel message and for the church to be an inclusive place, a place where anyone can come and anyone can hear that love of God and feel that love of God. The Holy Spirit came to all people not just a select few, not just the leadership, not just those that had, had the, the power or the funds. The Spirit came on all people, everyone. And then the word 
that's mentioned in the scripture is prophesy. But the word prophesy is really tied to proclaiming God's word, proclaiming the story of Jesus. It could be preaching, preaching the gospel to the whole world. I see it as telling God's story, telling the story of the love that is available for all. And that needs to be preached by everyone. By everyone, not just those who come and, and, and bring the word to you, people like myself who are called to preach, but for all of us to share that story of God's love. And often that comes out of our sharing our own story about what God has done in our lives. And that can be from that moment when we first make that decision to follow Christ. We need to make sure that we highlight and talk about Pentecost at least once a year because it's so important and so significant. It's important to the work of the church. It was the plan to go, to share, and it was the power that was given. We don't go and do this work in our own strength. We do this work through the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost reminds us that we need everyone to accomplish the tasks that God has given his church. Your service is desperately needed in the body of Christ. Each of us has a role to play, and every role is important. There's no small service to God. It all matters. Likewise, there are no insignificant ministries. No ministry is more important than another. I would say we're seeing that even more so now in this time of COVID-19. That the ministries that might have been unseen before now are at the forefront. The people that can produce the videos and can be behind the scenes and doing some of that technical work. But the work that is done to touch people's lives that are on the margins. And those that are being by themselves in their home and are being reached out to by others via phone or via note or sending cards. Those that are working to help us stay connected with one another. All ministries, everything that we're called to do is valuable. Small or hidden ministries often make the biggest difference. Ministries where you're, you're not seen in front of others. I think of it this way. The most important light in my house isn't necessarily the one that's overhead that provides the bright light. It's the night light that keeps me from stubbing my toe in the middle of the night when I get up. Each ministry matters because we're all dependent on one another. So what happens when a body part fails to function? What happens when we don't listen to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit? When the Spirit blows through our lives and we get that gentle prompting to do something or to be a part of something? The rest of the body suffers. I think right now, as we are formulating our plans and we're thinking about what we will do as, the, as our buildings begin to reopen, I think this is a very important part to consider. That we are to do no harm. We need every piece of our body of Christ. We need every part. And that means being considerate of every single body part, every single person that's needed in our ministry. And to do what we can as we begin to open our buildings to protect every single person. And to not do anything foolishly or quickly that could potentially harm someone or cause them to get sick. And potentially cause them to not be able to be part of the body of Christ any longer. I, as long with everyone else, is anxious to get together but to remember that we are called to love one another and to do no harm. 
And that's important when we consider that all of us are given different gifts to be part of the body of Christ. All of us matter. And if even a single person ends up getting sick because we have done something too quickly, then we lose the gifts and abilities and talents that that person brings to the table. In 1 Corinthians 12, 4, it says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works in all of them and everyone. This is the unity of the body. The Holy Spirit that came down on Pentecost, that continues the work of the church on the earth, now, I know in the past, there's been a lot of discussion about the different gifts of the Spirit. Again, no gift is more important than others. No one has a special gift that's special, more special than another. They're all equally important. God has a purpose and a plan. God has work for all of us to do. We all have a, a part to play in the work of the church. We're called all to be witnesses to our work, to God's work in our lives. And we're given wisdom, strength, and direction through the Holy Spirit. Every church is shaped and affected by everything that's going on around us. And certainly right now, our churches are being affected by the COVID-19. More than ever, we're needing to reach out to those who have needs, to those that are marginalized and don't have access to food, to shelter, to basic needs. More than ever, we're needing to be the hands and feet of Christ to those who are crying out on the margins and being more greatly affected by this pandemic than those who have means. We're definitely seeing the separation between those who have and those who have not. And that is part of sharing that gospel. It's part of showing Christ through our actions. In the day when Paul wrote the letter to Corinth and talked about the body of Christ, the political system served the wealthy better than it did the poor. And we're seeing that today. What you saw on that day was the poor struggling folks, just as we're seeing the poor struggling folks today. In the early years when the church gathered for worship, they shared their stories of their encounters with Jesus. They shared a simple meal and they shared in remembrance around communion. We still can do that, even though we are not able to be physically present in our buildings. In fact, we have a great opportunity even now to, to touch even more lives through this. We have the opportunity to use the various tools that have been given us to share this word, to share our own stories about God's work in our lives. And to connect with one another. Yes, we're not physically together. But it's going to be a, 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 a quite a while, I think, before we're able to be physically together in the way that we'd like to be. Which is to be able to hug one another and, and to be able to share a meal together. We can share communion now, virtually. Yeah, it's, it's not the same but we're still able to share this common meal together. So it's a challenge to us in this day and age. Paul at the beginning of his ministry was encouraging the church to not be like the culture around them. Just as Peter did when he preached his first sermon challenging the culture. 
Paul is saying everybody matters. We all have something to offer. Each person is part of the larger whole, the larger body of Christ. And he encourages each one of us to treat one another with the same respect which which God treats all of God's children. Part of my story has been how Christ has changed my life. And it was just about six years ago that I preached my first sermon. And I've had the opportunity to learn and grow as Christ has given me power and as Christ has given me the strength and the wisdom to be able to speak and to share the truth of God's love for other people. It's an amazing time to think about being the church. We're being challenged in so many ways to think of things differently, to be different. And Pentecost turned the world upside down. And I really believe that Pentecost turned the disciples' lives upside down. I mean, they knew that the comforter was coming, but I don't think they quite anticipated what would happen when the Holy Spirit actually did come. And so our lives feel a little topsy-turvy right now. And as we remember Pentecost, we think about that they didn't really know what was going to happen. They knew what Jesus said, that there would be a comforter, that there would be power from on high to help them be able to go into the world. So also it is with us. We don't know exactly what's coming. We don't know how this is all going to turn out. But what we do know is that we also have a part to play. We all still have a reason and a purpose for serving God. We all still have people that we can touch with the story of God's love. You know, maybe you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing. Maybe you're still seeking what God wants you to do. You can look at your passion. You can spend time in prayer. That's the wonderful part about the Holy Spirit being with us is that at any point we can talk to spirit. We can feel that wonderful comforting love that wraps around us. The wonderful love that's warm and comforting. There are divine appointments that still happen even in this time of physical distancing. These moments that break up the mundane, the days when you're not sure what day it is because one day looks an awful lot like the next. And the wonderful part is that these gifts and the Holy Spirit was given to all of us. It's a support, she's a support and a comforter for us. The Spirit will lead us. We'll make it a conduit of love for others. Jesus came and did the work that he was called to do and had to leave in order for this wonderful, comforting Spirit to come. And it's that wonderful, comforting spirit that leads us and guides us still today. Everything that happened on Pentecost and continues to happen is an example of what happens when Christians are obedient to this nudge of the spirit and follow what's been given to them. And the promise that we have, that we have this wonderful spirit, we have this wonderful comfort, and we have this wonderful time of knowing that whatever it is that we're given, we can do. Jesus had commanded the disciples to gather together and to watch and to wait for the Holy Spirit. Those that were present on the day of Pentecost 
we're able to fulfill that purpose and begin the journey of the church and be part of something much bigger than themselves. So now we are also part of something much bigger than ourselves. Let's take this spirit that is within us and to move forward and to move out into this brand new world, a whole new world that's been created. The work continues. Be encouraged this day and let the fire fall. Amen.